Hey there model railroaders welcome to Vintage Road and Rail in today's video we're going to take a look at a uh, very special train set or at least to me and this is a Kellogg's Tony Trading Company Western Freight Train that's a lot of words uh, and this is manufactured by Bachman and the reason this is special to me uh, the primary reason is this was a gift uh, my two daughters they went in together and bought this for me uh, and the other thing is it's a promotional slash billboard type set and if you've been watching my channel you know I love those types of things so let's uh, take a quick pan here and take a look at the box uh, this is still in the plastic or cellophane whatever you want to call it but it's just as you can see it's <clears throat> excuse me hanging on by a thread so if we pan over we can see where it says Tony Trading Company Western Freight Train Set and we've got some really nice uh, box art here. Uh, we've got Tony the Tiger as the engineer. And if we come back and just kind of come down a little bit, we can then get a little scan of what is included in this train set. So that's just a quick look of the uh, front of the box there. And there's not really a whole lot to see uh, anywhere else on the box. I'm going to try to turn it up here without tripping over something. And you can see that plastic is just hanging on by a thread. And really what you see right here is what there is to see on all four sides of the box. All right, so let's see if we can carefully turn it around without it the plastic completely giving way. And on the back, like you'll see with a lot of Bachman's train sets. There we go. You can see these various track plans. And apparently I didn't pay attention to it, uh, but it has easy track. I didn't realize that they had easy track that far back. Um, and speaking of that, this set, I'm trying to figure out when it was made. Um, if you look at the locomotive and the cars, you'll see a copyright on there of 1993. But if you look at the front of the box, um, at the bottom, it said copyright 1995. So more than likely, my guess is this was offered for at least a couple of years and the box for this particular set was printed in 95 because I can't think of any reason why a set made in 93 would have a future date on it unless there's something about copyright law I don't know <laughs> so anyway uh, let's go ahead and finish the job that time has started and let's just go ahead and get this plastic off of here I mean it's hanging on by thread and and it may be more difficult to get off the one I'm thinking because it looks like people have tried to use some tape to keep it from coming off. That's exactly what they've done. So this is going to be... Into, oh no. Okay. So I'm going to have to... I'm going to stop the camera to remove this because I understand what people are thinking when they want to try to keep it in the package, you know, this cellophane. I mean, 30 years, if this was made in 1993, that's 30 years ago. Uh, don't ask me how I know that so quickly. Uh, but, but anyway, you know, that cellophane is gonna give way, especially if it's shuffled around a bit. So let me go ahead and stop the video for a moment, try to carefully get this off so it's not gonna tear up the box, and then we'll do an unboxing, and then we'll take a detailed look at each car, and then we'll, uh, try to run it here on this track and see how she does. I was able to get that cellophane off without doing too much in the way of damage. Uh, kind of a shame, but it didn't peel much. So anyway, um, I've got the train set out of the cellophane and I've went ahead here and opened both ends. Um, and this is packaged the way Bachman still does their HO scale train sets. These windows here are open, 
which is fine and good when the set is new because the plastic that contains the cars has got plas you know, um, plastic or cellophane or whatever you want to call it wrapped around it, which holds everything in. The problem is once you break that plastic, the cars can easily be damaged because there's nothing protecting them. So I don't like that. So anyway, I've opened both ends here. So I'm gonna push the contents out. So I'm gonna turn the camera this way so we can stare for a few moments at just an open blank table. And let me see if I can scoop this stuff out from this end. One part. And here's the other. Okay. Now I've got something I can get a hold of here. Let's start with this one here. So we have got a few minor accessories. We got some telephone poles. We got some, oh, can't see nothing. Let me try that again. So we got a baggie of telephone poles here. Another baggie of telephone poles. A baggie of some street signs and a couple of baggies of these here unpainted figures and when we look inside here these are zip tied down so we've got two sections of curve track one here and one over there and then we've got a couple of sections of straight track. One of them being a re-railer slash terminal piece where you plug up your power. And then here we've got some paperwork. Right here we've got the Bachman assembly instructions. This is nice to have. This lets you know what's supposed to be in the set. So that's a packing list, if you will. And we've got some locomotive information, if I can get it to separate from the other piece here. All right, here we go. This is for our F9 diesel. It gives you some troubleshooting and maintenance tips, as well as on the back. We have got an exploded diagram of what's in the uh, innards of the locomotive. And you can see this is an old school one because it's got the pancake drive. So I'm hoping that we do not have cracked gears. Those older locomotives are really prone to that. We'll find out when we try to test run everything. All right, so. And then we've got a bunch of other stuff here, warranty card and such, and I think there's probably a catalog. Oh no, look here, we got a comic book. We got the Bachman comic book that shows you how to set everything up. I like those. And then where we can get a catalog. So this set at the very least was packaged in 1995 based on this catalog as well as what was on the front of the box. Uh, so I'm wondering if this set had been made multiple years. All right, so let me try to get this paperwork out of the way. I'll just set it off to the side. Maybe we'll set this to the side here. All right, so what we've got 
and the first box. So we have got our F9 diesel locomotive. And I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to try to get up close. I'm not sure how well that's going to come through. But you can see where it says copyright or trademark, I guess I should say, 1993. Now, being that that's a trademark, maybe that's just what would be there regardless of what year prior to 1995. I'm not sure. So we've got our power supply up here. And we've got an open hopper featuring Tony the Tiger and his cereal Frosted Flakes. And we're going to unbox all these in a couple of moments and get a closer look at everything. And here we've got 50 foot box car and we've got two cereals represented here. We've got Raisin Bran and its mascot, the Sun. And we've got uh, Toucan Sam representing Fruit Loops. Then up here Got another 50 foot uh, box car. Can't quite tell if this is a reefer or not. But we've got two cereals again represented. We've got Kellogg's Rice Krispies and their mascots, Snap Crackle Pop. And if you're my generation, you probably just sang that song in your head. And then we've got the Corn Flakes Chicken. And then down here we've got a standard caboose. This looks like a wide vision caboose and a wheel that has at some point popped off so we'll need to put that back on and it's just uh, got the Kellogg's logo. Alright, so I'm going to stop the camera and I'm going to carefully unbox all of this stuff so I don't break anything and then I've got a little lazy Susan over here that will set each car on and I'll drop the camera down and we can take a closer look and then once we do that we'll see if this set runs. I've got everything unboxed and I've got um, the caboose up here on our little Lazy Susan, so we can just uh, give it a 360 degree turn. So we've got a pretty interesting kind of a yellowish, almost orange type color. And we've got our Kellogg's logo, and we've got a little trademark here. That's that 1993 I've been talking about. And you can see we've got a wide vision caboose. And the detail, like most of the Bachman stuff of that era, and even in train sets you get in your modern era, are mostly all molded in and you can see right here the separately applied pieces as we got our railing and our uh, brake wheel and this is an older set so it still has is that a yep that's a horn hook coupler so that's what we're gonna have on all of these uh, pieces here so come around and we've got more of the same but you know the lettering and everything looks nice and crisp looks really good we got our smoke jack here and again on this end it's just more of the same so if we flip this over you can see we've got our plastic wheels and we do not have body mounted couplers these are all truck mounted and you can see a little bit of the uh, under frame detail everything is all molded in so it looks nice I mean it's pretty basic but that's kind of what you expect from a train set so next, let us move to, let me not get my arm in the, in the way here. We'll go to the Corn Flakes and the uh, Rice Krispies car. So again, we've got the uh, logos for these brands of cereals look really nice, really crisp. And we've got again our molded detail. We've got our steps, we've got our molded in uh, ladders, grab irons. As we come around to the B end here, again, the only separately applied piece we've really got is going to be this brake wheel. Everything else, as you can see, is molded in. And we've just got more of the same on this end. And then we've got a roof walk up there. And again, plastic wheels, knuckle couplers, truck mounted, and our molded in detail. Now this next car is pretty much going to be identical. 
with the exception, I think this is a standard plug door box car, and I think that other one was a uh, reefer of some sort, and the reason I kind of think that, and correct me if I'm wrong, somebody, but I thought that this little vent area right here would be where the refrigeration unit would be. Again, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. All right, so this is a nice bright red car. The other one was silver, obviously. So we've got our Fruit Loops and our Raisin Bran. Everything looks nice and crisp, looks really nice. And again, the only separately applied part is here on our BN, we got our brake wheel. And here is the opposing side. And then we'll come down to our A end. And again, just everything molded in. So no point in looking at the bottom, it's identical to the last one. In our final freight car, we've got, excuse me, what I believe to be a 40 foot gondola, or I'm sorry, uh, open, open hopper that does not have a coal load. I was a little disappointed by that, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Now this one is interesting as compared to the other two. The other two had to share cereals. Uh, you had the Raisin Bran and the Fruit Loops, and you had the Rice Krispies, and then you had the Kellogg's. But Tony, I guess because this is his set, Frosted Flakes, they get their own car. So I guess there's something to, you know, be said for being the engineer here. All right, so again with the molded detail, the uh, Frosted Flakes logo looks nice and crisp. Again, the only separately applied piece is going to be this brake wheel. The other side looks just as good as the uh, previous side. And as we keep coming around here, there's our A end. More of the same as we saw on the other two cars. Everything's molded in, but it still looks good. But our plastic wheels and horn hook couplers. Now let's uh, turn our attention to the power of the whole thing. We have got our Bachman EMD F9 unit. So let's kind of tilt it over and we can see our exhaust up here. I'm not sure if this is for a dynamic brake, but we do not have a smoke generator. And then we've got our horns. These would be separately applied pieces. And I think that's about it for the separately applied parts. Um, the Kellogg's logo is nice and crisp. We've got that nice red and silver war bonnet paint scheme here. There are no windows here. I can poke this pencil straight through. But we do have window glazing right here on the front. No number boards, but we do have a little bit of plastic there. Here's our headlight. And we've got our Kellogg logo. As we keep going around, it's going to be pretty much identical to the previous side. Molded in detail for our steps, but we do have these hanging down here. So if you want one of these sets, be careful. These can be easily broken. And if you ever want to get inside and take a look, you just grab on either side right here, pull it apart slightly, give it a little shake, and out it will come. And here we go for the back. And let's take a look here. Got some decent little molded in detail for our side frames here. And not really a lot to shout about on the bottom. It just says Bachman made in China. And that is about it. Alright, so let's get these on the track, shall we? Kind of repositioned this uh, tripod a little bit using the Lazy Susan and this is a new tripod so I'm kind of experimenting with it a little bit. Alright so let's first get the locomotive on and let's see if it's going to run before we start attaching cars to it and everything. Get on, get on there. I didn't think about the fact this may actually have traction tires so hopefully they're still good. Alright, so let's bring it around here. Let's give some power to the track. Well, it moved. Alright, 
Well, it does move. So let's put it back and forward here. A little wobbly, but it's going nice and slow. So that's not bad, considering it's been in a box for 30 years. All right, so let's uh, stop it and bring it back. Before we start pulling some cars with it, it's usually recommended to run these things for at least about 15 minutes or so in each direction. So I'm going to get it a little bit of a break in and then we'll see if that slow performance is a little bit better next time around and then we'll hook up some cars and we'll let this thing make a few laps. I've run the uh, locomotive in a little bit. I only did about 10 minutes in each direction. I didn't want to go crazy with it because this has been in a box for 30 years. It's running pretty good, but it really could probably benefit from a nice uh, oiling up some fresh grease, all that good stuff. But let's see if we notice any difference in our slow speed after a little bit of a run-in. wanting to pick up speed. So it is doing a tad better at slow speed than what it had been. Uh, I don't notice a better slow speed if you will but what I do notice is when looking at the controller it starts moving at 50% instead of the 60% it took a little bit ago so a little bit of a break in I think did some wonders for it so let's go ahead and get some cars on here well maybe we should go the right direction So let me reach over the camera here. So we've got the frosted flakes on there. Got two can Sam. The plastic wheels, these are all pretty decent. And there's still a fair amount of resistance. I wouldn't want them on the regular. But they're not too bad. Come on, get on there. camera. Hopefully it's not all shaky. I've noticed this thing when I freehand it. It didn't used to do this, but you would notice like a little shakiness. All right, let's run this set, shall we? Wow, that looks good. That is a beautiful set.
pick up a little bit of speed. Notice a little bit of squeakiness. Like I said earlier, it probably just needs a little bit of fresh oil. But in all honesty, it'll probably go in storage for a while. I've got so many of these promotional train sets that it's hard to, to run them all. I have to keep them in a separate storage facility. I hope one of these days to have a basement big enough where that I can have them all on display and can pull them down and run them whenever I like. Let's slow it down. Let's come down here and get a nice look at it as it rolls, rolls through. There's our shiny Kellogg's locomotive. Dip down below the 50 percent. <laughs> well, all right, model railroaders. That's a look at this uh, Kellogg's promotional train set by Bachman, and it's actually called the Tony. What is that? Ah, Tony Trading Company. Western Freight Train. Like I said, that's a mouthful. But it is a beautiful set. I really like the uh, the billboard cars on here. And since this is a promotional set, the nice bright chrome of the locomotive looks really good. Alright. Seems like a good place to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed taking a look at this train set, Make sure and hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you'll be alerted as to when another video comes up. My videos have been a little bit thin on the ground because I've been so busy with work. I've probably spent more time in a hotel than home here recently. But uh, I really want to try to get some more videos up a little bit more frequently. I've got a lot of stuff that we can uh, take a look at. Well, Alright, until next video. Happy model railroading. Take care.